Resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Ranger was accompanied by his nephew Dan Reed and his Indian companion Tonto when he rode into the patio of a Spanish mission. The Padre was on hand to welcome his three friends. Buenos dias, Padre. Buenos dias, amigos. Oh, padre. Oh. Uh, it is good to see all three of you. We met some Indians, Padre, who told us that you were hoping we would come here soon. You have come at just the right time. The teacher is inside at this very moment. The teacher? She is in the mission school. Her name is Sally Denton. Oh? I know that you have many things to do, things of great importance to the development of our country. I do not like to ask that you spend time with something you may consider unimportant. And... Uh, what is your problem, Padre? The problem belongs to the school teacher. Teachers in the West are among the most important people. They are the custodians of our future leaders. Padre, this must be the man you told me about. Your friend who wears the mask. Uh, yes. You are Miss Denton? Yes, that's right. I just started telling my friend about you. Oh, this is Toto. I'm glad to meet you, Tony. Oh, and my... And, uh, Dan Reed. How do you do, Miss Denton? Why, you're just a boy. <laughs> yes, I guess so. A boy to be traveling with the Lone Ranger and Tonto. Oh, not always. Dan spends lots of his time in school. Why, you must be just about the age of Joe Fletcher. Fletcher. Do you know him, sir? I know of a man named Fletcher, Zachary Fletcher. He's the father of the boy in my school. I see. I know what you're thinking. Zachary Fletcher is a bad man. His friends are... Well, I don't like to speak against any man, Zachary but I... Fletcher is generally supposed to be the leader of a gang of crooks. They remain out of jail only because they've killed everyone who might be a witness against them. I didn't know that Zachary had a son... The boy came from the East a short time ago, after the death of his mother. He came to my school. At first, he behaved very well, and he was a good student. But lately, he's been changing. He... Oh, Padre, 
May I speak frankly? Of course. Please do. Joe Fletcher has become bad. Miss Denton, in this country, there are a lot of bad men, but I've never known of a bad boy. Joe lies and cheats and steals. He brags and bullies the other children. Why, just the other day, he was boasting of the fact that his father was the leader of a gang. I... Well, I'm afraid of his effect on the other children. I'd like to tell him that he cannot come to school anymore. Oh, no. No, he must remain in school. It is he who needs it more than the others. Yes, I I agree with the padre. The padre told me a lot about you. Perhaps, perhaps you can find a way to put Joe's father and the members of his gang in jail. Sheriff Walker would lose no time in jailing those men if he had any evidence against them. Yes, I suppose so. Frankly, I see no hope for Joe unless he can be taken from the influence of his home. Has uh, Joe any friends? Boys his own age? No. <laughs> Every boy should have a chum. But what boys would want to be a chum? Miss Denton. Miss Denton, have you room in your school for one more boy? Why, of course. How about it, Dan? How about it? Well, what do you mean, sir? Here's a chance for you to do a good turn. Go to the mission school for a few weeks and get acquainted with Joe Fletcher. Oh, but golly, I've been to school. I'm just starting a vacation. <laughs> Extra school not hurt, Dan. Oh, Dan, <laughs> Dan, you often said you'd like to be a lawman or a secret service man. Well, here's your chance. The law would like to get some evidence against Fletcher's gang. Now, you go to the school and get acquainted with Joe... He might drop something to give us an inside track on the plans of the gang. Say, he might at that. Maybe I can get some information that'll help to smash that gang. Maybe you can. I'll be a regular detective, huh? Well, that's the idea. Miss Denton, will you take Dan inside and make arrangements for him to start in your school tomorrow? Why, of course. Dan, I shall be pleased to have you in my school. Now, let's go talk about it. All right, Miss Denton. You must have a... That one way to get Dan in school. <laughs> Do you, amigo, think your friend will have some influence on this boy? Through Dan, we'll learn a lot about Joe Fletcher. Then we may be able to take steps so a misguided boy will not become a bad man. Oh, I hope so. Padre, can you find a place for Dan to board uh, somewhere in town? But of course. I can arrange for him to live with the sheriff and his wife. But what of you and Tonto? Oh, we'll find a place in the woods near town and make a camp. Dan can report to us each evening and let us know how he's progressing with Joe Fletcher. Dan enrolled in the school the following day. Each evening, he rode to the Lone Ranger's camp, but there was little to report. He had been unable to establish any friendly acquaintance with Joe Fletcher. Joe had remained aloof and barely nodded to the new boy. It was the end of the session one week after Dan had started in the school. The students were filing past the teacher's desk. Now, don't forget to leave your examination papers on my desk. Place them right here. Thank you, Jimmy. Oh, here's mine. Thank you. Uh, Miss Denton. Where's your paper, Dan? I must have lost it. I, I had it finished before recess. Oh, listen to him. No one had the papers done before recess. Oh, I did. But now I can't find it. Never mind, Dan. You may do it over tomorrow. Well, here's my paper, Miss Denton. It's all finished. Those questions were easy. Joe, you found those questions easy? A oh, sure thing. I'm very glad to hear it. Red-faced and embarrassed, Dan Reed left the school building with Joe Fletcher close behind. Most of the students laughed and ran and shouted as they headed homeward, but not Joe Fletcher. Joe walked silently away from the school, and Dan Reed followed until the two were well away from the other pupils. Hey there, Joe. Huh? Oh, you. What's the idea? You following me? I want to talk to you about that paper you took from my desk. What? You accuse me of stealing your paper? Got a good notion to smack you in the mouth. Don't lie about it, Joe. I saw you. Just before recess was over, you went inside and took it out of my desk. It's the same as calling me a thief. Joe... I'll be glad to help you with your lessons. But don't go into my desk again. Understand? You can't talk to me like that. You've made one mistake today. Don't make another one now. Why, you... Well, I'll show you. <laughs> Take that. 
All right. You started it. Here's one for you. I'll get you for that. I'll knock your head off. You missed. I'll get you this time. Uh, Joe Fletcher swung wildly right. and desperately, but Dan Reed dodged to parry most of the blows. And those that landed were merely glancing. Dan had been trained by the Lone Ranger in the use of his fist and struck clean, sharp blows that landed accurately. Then Joe went down. Dan leaped on top of him and grabbed one arm. Now, Joe, sit down, you can fast. Now, let me let go. I'll get you for this. Did you take the papers off my desk? Let go, I tell you, let go of me. Did you? I can put more pressure on your eyes. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I took them. Let me go now, will you? That's better. Sorry I had to be rough with you, Joe. Are uh, you? You'll be sorry Come for on. This. I'll help you to your feet. Gosh. Where, where'd you learn to fight like that? You're the first kid ever knocked me down. I had a good teacher. Who is he? You wouldn't know his name. But he's one of the greatest fighting men who ever lived. I'll bet my dad could knock his ears off. He's been in more fights than anybody. And he's never lost one either. You... You think a lot of your dad, don't you, Joe? Why, sure. Why shouldn't I? What's wrong with my dad? Oh, don't get sore at me, Joe. I didn't say anything was wrong with him. You hadn't better. Look here, Joe. Why don't you come over to my room at the sheriff's house and... Well, let me show you some of my things. Uh, you're... You're boarding with the sheriff? Wh what's wrong with that? I've got to have some place to live. How about coming along and staying for supper? Well, uh, Well, gosh, I, I don't know. I'd like to show you the hunting knife and the leather jacket that an Indian chief gave me. An Indian chief? Hey, golly, no fooling? No fooling. And I'll show you my horse. Your own horse? Yes, sir. Did you swipe it? <laughs> of course not. He's pure white except for a black star in his forehead. I call him Victor. Come on with me, Joe. I'll saddle him and let you ride him. Well, gosh, uh, I suppose I could. My pop generally stays away from the shack till pretty late. No fun to eat alone. The only thing is that... Sheriff's got no use for me or my dad. Well, where did you get that idea? Dad and I know how everyone feels toward us. Don't worry about the sheriff. I know that any friend of mine will be welcome. It was the expectation of riding Dan's horse that accounted for Joe's decision to accompany Dan to the sheriff's home. In the meantime, Sally Denton, the school teacher, stopped as usual on her way home for a chat with John Ledoux, who worked at the livery stable. Sally didn't suspect that Ledoux was secretly a member of Zack Fletcher's gang. Well, howdy, Miss Denton. Good to see you. Thank you, Mr. Ledoux. Hey, you look sort of tired. Been having more trouble with the Fletcher boy? He got his comeuppance today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I saw it from the window of the schoolroom. Wow, well, you saw what? Joe met more than his match. He was knocked down. Well, you don't say. Or one of the other boys? Mm -hmm. A boy named Dan Reed. Who's Dan Reed? I never heard of him. Well, he... can you keep a secret? Oh, of course you can. The boy who whipped Joe Fletcher is a friend of the Lone Ranger. What? You don't say. What's he doing around here? The Lone Ranger himself is camped in the woods. Well, for what? What's he doing here? That's all I can tell you. Miss Sally, the sheriff has been downright anxious to get some evidence on Zack Fletcher, Joe's father. Do you suppose that lone ranger is here to help him? Oh, my thunder, it sounds like it. If that Reed boy is fighting with young I Joe... I can't tell you anymore. Perhaps I shouldn't have said so much. But you'll not tell anyone, will you? And don't you worry, Miss Sally. I know when to talk and when to keep still. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scene, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
continue. That day, while Dan entertained the outlaw leader's son, Zach Fletcher himself was meeting his gang in a camp. Hey, somebody's coming. And whoever it is is making no effort to sneak up on us. Well, uh, maybe it's Ledoux. You got everything set with him for tomorrow when we rob the bank? You sure. And the sheriff starts running around getting the posse together. Ledoux will see that there's lots of delay in getting the horses ready. That is Ledoux. Oh, oh, oh. Hi, Ledoux. Hi, boys. Hi, Hi. Hi. Zach, I got news for you. Yeah, what is it? The sheriff has help. Help? <laughs> he needs plenty of help. Well, he has plenty. He has help named the Lone Ranger. Oh, How do you know you got the true facts? I got it straight from the school, Ma. Yeah. A kid named Dan Reed, a friend of the Lone Ranger, is in her school. And he's staying at the sheriff's house. What do we do now? Biggie. Saddle your horse and ride back to town with the Well, what for? There's about one hour of daylight left. You'll get to the sheriff's house just about time it's getting dark. Sheriff's house? What? Wait a minute, Zach. What's on your mind? That kid friend of the Lone Rangers. <laughs> get him, and we'll have the Lone Ranger eaten out of our hands. <laughs> Tonto had been hunting in the hills. They were on their way to camp as twilight was deepening. I wonder if Dan will have news for us tonight. A whole week gone. Nothing happened yet. Maybe soon we'll Wait, find Tonto, out. I hear hoofbeats. Ah. The horse travel plenty fast. Their horse, that way. Coming from town. And two fellas chase him. Tonto, that's Dan Reed's horse. Must be Dan riding. Fellow in back, fire gun. Get him up, scum. Lone Ranger was slightly ahead of Tonto, racing to meet the rider of the white horse and the two men who were firing at the boy. One of the bullets found a mark. The fleeing boy reeled in the saddle and fell to the ground. The masked man thought it was Dan Reed. He shouted over his shoulder and pointed to the ground. They killed him, Tonto. I'm going after those two. The Lone Ranger was fired by a rage he'd never known before. Dan Reed shot, perhaps killed. Those who did it would pay. He fired as he rode. The two who had been chasing the white horse turned and raced the other way. We'll get them. Come to me. One of the men spilled from his horse. The masked man kept after the other. Great horse Silver quickly cut down the distance. Radu fired over his shoulder. When his gun was empty, he tried to urge his horse to greater speed. But the Lone Ranger was alongside. He reached out and grabbed Radu. I want you. Radu was jerked from the saddle. He was helpless in the masked man's iron grip. Oh, Silver, oh, easy. Ladoo and the other outlaw, whose only injury was a shoulder wound, were tied and forced to ride to the place where Tonto was bandaging a boy's arm. Then, for the first time, the Lone Ranger realized that the boy was not Dan Reed. Uh, him not hurt bad. Just scratch him out. I'm all right. I'll get square with those dirty crooks. Who are you, son? I'm Joe Fletcher. Joe Fletcher? Where did you get that white horse? Uh, a friend loaned him to me. A friend? Dan Reed. You wouldn't know him. I do know him. I recognize the horse. I thought you were Dan Reed. Now, see here, mister. What about that mask? Who are you? I'll tell you after I hear how you got Dan Reed's horse. Did he really loan it to you? Oh, sure. I went to the sheriff's house with him. I had supper there. He showed me his things, and then he let me ride his horse. When I got to the edge of town, the do and another man jumped me. I got away. Then they took after me and, and shot me. You'll be all right, Joe. I'll take you to a doctor. Hello. Uh, take those two men to Sheriff Walker and tell him what happened. Uh, me do it. Yes. Joe, you'll find it hard to guide a horse with that wound. You better ride with me on Silver. Huh? Victor will follow us to town. Silver? Yes, that's right. Steady, boy. Gosh. Now that I know about that mask and that horse, Dan Reed told me he had a friend, a fighting man. You're his friend. You're the Lone Ranger. Joe, I want to be your friend, too. Now, let's get to town. The Lone Ranger left Joe with the doctor, then helped the sheriff question the two captured men. It was later than usual when Zachary Fletcher returned to his shack in town that night. Striking a match, she lighted the oil lamp that stood on the bare table. Wish that kid would clean up around here. 
Them shades so black you can't. Yo! You in bed? Yo! Lutcher. Nasty. Where'd you come from? Didn't you want to see me? Oh, I savvy. I heard you were around. Yeah, sure. Always had a hankering to meet the Lone Ranger. Well, are you going to draw that gun or... Right now. Oh. It hurts when a gun shot out of your hand. You beat me to the trigger all right enough. All right, I got no gun. Go ahead, shoot me. That's what you aim to do? I don't want to shoot you, Fletcher. But you deserve the worst beating any man has ever had. You think you're big enough to give it to me? I'm going to try. Just host that gun and see what I do to you. Right, it's hosted. Now I'll show you. Oh, you missed. I'll get you. You'll pay for that. I hear another. In the shack, Zach Fletcher found his brute strength no match for the Lone Ranger's skill. Blow after blow showered on his chin and head. Hard jabs caught him in the stomach until finally he grew weak. He could no longer defend himself. And then his knees buckled and he slumped to the floor. All right, had enough? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You lick me. You deserve more than that for shooting a boy. <laughs> I never shot no boy. You sent a do and another man to capture Dan Reed. How do you know? I know. They knew Dan's horse better than they knew Dan. The do and his partner didn't know that it was your son riding the white horse. Who, oh, Joe? My, my son? Joe, no, I... <laughs> you mean I killed my boy? I knew that you care. That kid, he was all I had... Always wanted to get rich, so I... No, he's gone. It's all my fault. Don't you wish you could have another chance to do the right thing for him? I'd, I'd give all I got. All I ever hoped to have if only he was alive. Fletcher. Fletcher, you're going to get another chance. Yeah? Your boy's alive. You, you mean that? Yes, he's with the sheriff. Come on, I'll take you to him. And you and I have something to talk about. It was the next morning. From several different directions, Fletcher's men, in accordance with a plan to rob the bank, rode into town and made their way to the cafe. When they were all on hand, Fletcher rose from his chair, nodded toward a private room to the rear. His men followed him into the room and closed the door. Well, everything all set, boss? Everything is off, Denovan. What? what? The whole deal is off. That plain enough? Now, now, wait a minute. How come? What made you... Hey, you getting scared out on account of the Lone Ranger? Yeah. Denovan, there's never been a man could question my courage. I said the deal is off. Forget it. Take your horses and clear out. You can't let us down like this. We counted on that bank. I buddy. don't care what you counted on. I've got someone more important than you boys to consider. Nobody's got anything new, fellas. Take my advice and travel. Split up and travel far. Oh, no, you don't, Zach. We planned on this job and it's going through. If you won't leave the boys, then I will. We'll tackle that bank ourselves. Don't do it, gentlemen. Because if you do, I'll be waiting for you when you get there. You go with us, Fletcher. Don't, don't move. Better hold for that gun, Donovan. Not a chance. One of you boys disarm Fletcher. Sure, then. We'll take him along so he can't tip off our plans. Yeah. And one fast move from him, and I'll personally shoot him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You hear that, Fletcher? The boys are with me. Now you just walk right ahead of us. We'll go slow and careful into the bank. We'll be right in back of you. If there's any gun play, you'll be the first one shot. <laughs> Fletcher knew that the Lone Ranger and Lawman were waiting in the bank. He had given his men a chance to leave town and go unpunished for all their past crimes. And now hatred filled his heart when he saw how quickly those men could switch their loyalty to Donovan. He'd given them no further warning, even though he knew that he would be the first man shot. His face was grim as he led the way through the doors of the bank. Keep your eyes peeled and shoot if you have to. Watch it now, boys. I'm going to the cashier. 
All right, mister. It's a stick up. Pass out the cat. Now, you folks don't make a move. We're ready to shoot. It's a stick up. They're robbers. Yeah. Keep your hands high. No one will get hurt. Come on in, men. Let's get them, Sheriff. We were waiting for you, coyotes. you pulled us out. I tried to send you away. I'm glad you didn't go. And here's another cut for you. It was a short fight. Withering fire from lawmen hidden behind the counters in the bank quickly cut down the outlaws. Two were dead. The rest were wounded. And one man, seriously wounded, lay dying. The sheriff came from the inner office with Joe Fletcher and approached the dying man. Dad, Dad what happened? Shoot, sir. I got no time to tell you what happened. But today I, I took on a new job. You... you Carry it on for me. Dad. Dad. <laughs> Take it easy, Joe. Dad. Your dad became a good man. He, he said he, he had a new job. His new job was helping me, helping the law. He wants you to do the same. I, I want to, Shell. Do my best. Good boy. Maybe you'd like to come and live with me. You can have the room that Dan Reed used. Dan Reed? He's gone? Yep. He's waiting on the trail for that masked man mounting his horse outside. Sheriff, he's the Lone Ranger. George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, and directed by Charles D. Livingston. Tonight's drama was written by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone